Welcome, everybody. We'll start with the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Wong. Present. Commissioner Quig. Quig. Present. <laughs> Commissioner Joe. Present. Commissioner Fung. Here. And Chair Davis. Here. Um, agenda review. Does anybody want to move anything around or have any questions? Okay. Looks good. Uh, minutes. We don't have a need to review at this meeting. <coughs> Public communication. This time is reserved for those that want to speak to a topic that is in the purview of the Planning Commission, but not on tonight's agenda. So far, everything I have here is on the agenda. Does anybody have anything else to speak on? No? Okay, then we'll move on from there. Old business, we don't have any. <clears throat> Next up is the public hearing. It's for Gateway at Millbrae Station Project. It's a nice long paragraph I get to read to you people. Planning Commission review of a design review permit application to consider design aspects of the gateway at Millbrae Station transit oriented development project pursuant to Millbrae Municipal Code 10.05.2500C. The applicant, Republic Millbrae LLC, obtained approval of a development agreement to develop a TOD project consisting of number one, Site 5A, a six-story building with 151,583 square feet of offices on the top three floors over three levels of parking with 22,534 square feet of ground floor retail. Number two, Site 5B, 300 market rate housing units and 20 units affordable to moderate income persons in a seven-story building with parking on the first two floors and 13,749 square feet of ground floor retail. Number three, Site 6A, 80 affordable units in a five-story building, and four, Site 6B, a 164-room hotel and 7,840 square feet of ground floor retail in a five-story building on a site located north of Millbrae Avenue, east of the rail lines on Millbrae Bart site, and south of the High Line Canal and Bayside Manor neighborhood in the transit-oriented development zoning district of the Millbrae Station area specific plan. Okay, and you have something to share yes. with us? <clears throat> uh, commissioners, uh, uh, the matter tonight before you is uh, administrative in nature. Sometimes that's referred to as quasi-judicial. Uh, it requires you to apply evidence, the, the drawings that you have, um, to the set rules, which are the design guidelines in the specific plan and also the city's design review guidelines. Um, the law requires it. Uh, 
these decisions be made with full disclosure of all of the sources of information you may have received, both inside and outside of this hearing room. Uh, that's so everyone knows exactly what's gone into any decision you make. Therefore, I would ask you to please now briefly mention any meetings or conversations you have had with the developer, his representatives, or with any opponents of the project. While your summary need not be exhaustive, it would be helpful if you could mention the number of such meetings and the general subject matter of those conversations. Uh, in addition, I believe Mr. Wong would like to make a statement at this time. Okay. So in uh, terms of the first question, I've had absolutely no conversations with uh, anybody from the representative of the developers or any parties against since uh, before I took the planning commissioner position. Um, prior to that, I was part of the community organization uh, called Better Millbury, and uh, we were rallying people to get involved and provide their opinions for or against that. Um, I was really happy and proud that uh, the City Council had um, selected me last year to help sit on the Planning Commission. So I was uh, engaged and ready to share over 25 years of engineering experience in civil and uh, infrastructure projects. And um, just due to the uh, urgent messaging, I guess, in, uh, from our legal advisor um, as part of this review session, I'm willing to recuse myself to avoid aggravation to the city. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. I'll leave this in the capable hands of our other planning commissioners and uh, public for comment. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, you, I, I can start. Sure. Um, I had three meetings with Kelly Arardi. Um They were all general updates. This is the latest in the plan. One was last August, one was in January, and one was in February. Um, we pretty much just flipped, flipped through this big book and what was new, that was it. Um, I had uh, two phone calls with Mr. Irardi, um one in February, one in March. Um, basically, he was just asking if I had any questions, and that was pretty mostly it. And the one in March was just to request some um, that we might be open to doing a special meeting sooner than later. So that was that was pretty much the nature of it. Um, I miss, uh, met with Ms. Girardi probably five years ago um, when the project was not even actually on the table, I don't think, but I did have a meeting with him uh, about five years ago. And since then, I have received phone calls from Ms. Girardi with no, no response from me, just updating and see if I had any questions. Thank you. So my disclosure pertains to the time that I have since been appointed to the Planning Commission. Um, Mr. Arati had requested a meeting with me over email in the past, which I declined nicely. I have had uh, numerous encounters of the public coming up to me at supermarket, schools, coffee shop, restaurants, and various other public meeting places, when for the most part, they just wanted to know and inquire about the development. So they gave me their general feeling about the project and how it would impact school, traffic, parking, and their overall quality of lives. And um, I try to explain to them what the project is about and share some of the facts about the projects. Um, I cannot recall exactly how many and dates of those encounters and, and what the names were. Um, also had a meeting with uh, Mr. Baron Soon, Mr. Al Mr. Mel Lee, as well as Mr. Alan Wong on the phone at the time, who was not a planning commissioner at the time. They're about the time June 2018. I attended the meeting as a private citizen without any official capacity or affiliations. I expressed my comments regarding the projects solely based on the testimonial that I have received during the public hearings presented by staff as well as the applicant. And the comments I expressed during the meetings are the same comments I made during those public hearings that I anticipated, that I had participated. So this concludes my ex parte disclosure uh, contacts, and I believe my previous contact does not expose me with any bias information, and I intend to hear this case justly and fairly. I'm sorry, can I add? 
Um, so I only, this is since the, before the last meeting. So last year I did have a, a couple of meetings, but I did disclose that at previous meetings. So I didn't go back. So just because Commissioner Quigg was mentioning five years ago and I was like, oh, wait. Um, so I've had a couple meetings, I think last year, just to, and I did disclose those at the previous meetings. All right. Thank you. Okay. Staff report. Thank you, Chair Davis. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Brad Meisner. I'm the Community Development Director here for the City of Millbrae. So before you this evening is the design review permit public hearing for the project, the gateway at Millbrae Station. Um, as I've mentioned to you in the past, uh, especially on Monday and in previous times before that, again, this is a design review permit under the uh, Millbrae uh, zoning code. This is a permit that requires, uh, is required for all new construction projects, whether it's a single family home or large projects like what we're reviewing this evening. Uh, for, for this particular project, we have to ensure that the project is consistent with the Millbrae stationary specific plan zoning. And the Planning Commission and both the City Council have the purview to review applications in relation to architecture, building materials, colors, uh, landscaping, signage, and the design guidelines. Um, in order to approve a project, you will have to make very specific findings of fact, and those findings of fact are, are within our uh, zoning code, section 1005-2500-C2, A through D, to be specific. And just to make sure that we're all clear, and also to be on the public record, and this relates to all design review permit applications, I know I've received a number of comments from different people in the public and there still seems to be a little bit of confusion. So I just want to make this point very clearly that for any design review permit, again, whether it's a single family home, whether it's a brand new commercial building or a large hotel or the project we have before us this evening, the Planning Commission has a number of options available to you, alternatives in terms of how you go about making your decision. You always have the right to approve a project. You have the right to deny a project if you made certain findings. You have the right to approve a project with added conditions if you think that the conditions that have been put in place are not adequate. And, and last but not least, you always have the right to continue a project if you felt like that there was a need for any kind of redesign or any outstanding issues before you make your final determination. So I just want to make that, that known and clear. Uh, back to this project. This project has gone through a number of approvals to date. Um, Importantly, back on April 10th of 2018, the project uh, did receive approval, approval of a development agreement. Along with that, a development agreement was a site development plan, conditional use, uh, conditional use permit for the hotel, and approval of a vesting tentative map. Also, uh, there were findings of fact that were made um, concerning the environmental impact report under the California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, project overview, again, it's approximately 11 uh, acre project that's located directly uh, adjacent to the, the bar, the intermodal station. Uh, there are through there, sorry, there are four buildings as part of the project, uh, a six story office building, the market rate residential building that has ground floor uh, retail component to it. There's a 100% uh, affordable housing project that has 80 units uh, that is dedicated for um, veterans as well as a hotel site with 164 hotel rooms and ground floor retail as well. Uh, just a little bit of the history on this project, some of the design review history. I'm not going to go all the way back in time, but just as, this, as it relates to this application, uh, we did have a study session here before Planning Commission back in October of 2018. It moved on to the City Council. They began a study session in January, on January 8th of 2019 and then concluded their study session a couple weeks later on July 22nd. Um, during the course of those public hearings, I'm sorry, those study sessions, uh, we heard a number of comments. Uh, commission here made a number of detailed comments concerning the site design, the architecture. We looked, um, we looked pretty in depth at the public art. There were a lot of presentations from the project team about the public art. Um, we talked about that linear paseo, um, which was at one point called the Art Walk. It's now called the Linear Paseo, and that's the, the strip that is a directly adjacent to Millbrae Avenue on the south side of the project. Um, we talked about signage. Uh, when it moved on to City Council, there were a number of comments that came from Council that had to do with um, wanting uh, a level of iconic design, water features, dog park, and Art Walk. Um, there were some requests to try to embrace the uniqueness and to try to um, 
play off of what's happening at the BART station plaza, um, whether or not roof lines could be added to the project to sort of emulate some of the, the curvature at the BART station, and then also looking at the residential building to kind of add some more flow, flow and curve to those buildings. Uh, the, the plans that are before you this evening are response from the uh, project ar architect team, and they are here for your consideration here this evening. Uh, so now let's get a little bit into the site and the project itself. Uh, this is the site perspective looking westward. So in the foreground is the, uh, is the hotel and you can see what is unique about the hotel is essentially a building that is, uh, runs north-south, uh, basically parallel with Rollins Road. Uh, it's basically a two-part building, two wings on north and south with a, a basically a four-level bridge that connects the two wings. Uh, Garden Lane goes underneath that, uh, that bridge you can see there in the foreground. There are two levels of hotel rooms and on, on the top you see some of that landscaping is a rooftop deck and I'll allow the, the project architect to give you a little more detail on that but I'm just giving you a quick overview. Um, to the left you can see um, uh, Millbury Avenue that's heading westward up over the overpass. So that first building is the market rate residential building. Again, that's 300 market rate residential units, of which 20 would also be available for um, below market rate units, affordable housing units. Uh, on the left side, it's very difficult to see, but we can get into it on some of the site plans is where the linear uh, Paseo would be located. It's essentially a, a long open space for uh, the public and for patrons and, and also residents of the development to walk their dogs, to experience outdoor spaces, to have areas to, uh, uh, to, seat, to sit. There would be public art, there would be murals, there would be landscaping there. Uh, to the middle of this picture, you can kind of see where is the Garden Lane pedestrian path. It's essentially uh, a long um, pedestrian way in between the Market Ray building and the office building. On the ground floors of those buildings, there would be a number of um, retail spaces, predominantly retail in the office building entire the in, along the entire length. And then in the market rate building, there are um, sections of retail as well as some other used areas for the actual residents of the building. Uh, to the right of this building, to the right of the office building, uh, you can see the cars that are sitting on the top of the BART parking garage. And then just to the east of that, um, to, the, to my right, right here is the affordable housing uh, uh, building, uh, 80 units. I'll start with building 5A, which is the office building. Uh, you'll note that in the staff report, I have a general narrative of the types of colors and materials and um, uh, the architectural design. And that staff report is also has references to the project plans that call out all of the building colors and materials for your reference. Um, just generally from, from staff's perspective, it's a very uh, modern design building. Uh, it has a very strong uh, base to the building with, uh, with a lot of glazing at the top. It has some uniqueness in terms of having these sort of second or third level decks, uh, the land, bead landscape decks. So that's sort of somewhat unique to an office building. Uh, the overhangs and sort of the window framing, the in, uh, inundation and uh, juxtaposition of wall planes also make it a very interesting building from an architectural design perspective. Uh, this, this image that you see here would also front garden lane and on the ground floor is the retail space. You can see the glazing and the storefront windows. Uh, these are the actual architectural elevations. Uh, all these elevations have been keyed to the, the materials and all the colors. I know that the project team has brought all those materials there this evening. If the commission would like to touch them and feel them and, and see what the quality of the materials are. So here's the north and south elevation of the office building, as well as the east and west elevations. Uh, moving on to the residential building. This is building 5B. This is the residential building that would be directly adjacent to Millbrae Avenue and the overpass. So the top elevation is uh, what would be seen from, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, on the bottom, the Rollins Road Millbrae perspective, which is sort of that corner location as you're headed westward on Millbrae Avenue. That is a corner feature that has been designed to be 
um, uh, to stand out in that it has these multicolored um, hardy bore systems along with uh, the sort of the gray centerpiece you can see in the windows that are framed up uh, with balconies that that um, uh, switch back and forth on on either side of the uh, corner the ground floor is uh, designed to be a full retail space there um, one point I wanted to make here along Millbury Avenue the best way to see it so on the bottom on the bottom drawing um, one point I just wanted to make at, make is that this building does have a tremendous amount of movement back and forth so what is sometimes difficult to pick up on the elevations when you're looking straight on from Millbrae Avenue is the depth of some of the change in plane of the buildings and I would have their their project architect call out some of those dimensions so that you can understand how much movement is actually occurring in the building when you go back to the actual perspective rendering at the top on the on the left side you can kind of see how deep some of those bays are Uh, moving on to the garden lane perspective. This is a very important perspective. This frames up the garden lane pedestrian walkway as we indicated before on the ground floor and the foreground on the bottom uh, photograph you see uh, that is where ground floor retail space would be. On the top um, you'll see the full elevation along garden lane and so essentially this building is anchored by retail um, on the far east side uh, and then when, as you move more towards the west, um, you'll get into some of the spaces that are programmed for the actual, for the building itself. There's a bike kitchen there that would be for folks that are cyclists to be able to repair bikes. There would be a transportation demand management coordinator down on the far corner, on the west corner. Uh, there's also a number of bike, um, long-term bike parking in there for residents as well, as well as some of the leasing space, the gym for the residents as well. Uh, and then we see the garden lane elevation um, continued. Um, this gives you an idea of what that corner elevation looks like at garden lane on the inside, uh, right here on the bottom, on the bottom photograph uh, elevation to the right, you kind of see a, a different framed up window with what is, uh, it's called a romantic walnut um, color. And you'll note that in the, in the staff report. Uh, here's a, a very nice elevation drawing from that's looking eastward so you can see how the building is changing as we move around it different colors different materials um, and just uh, ha has a visual interest to it moving on to building 6a is a residential is the affordable housing building for veterans on this image we have all of the elevations as you can see um, their, the use of color and window schedule helps kind of break the building down into smaller portions such that it doesn't read as, as large. Along the longer elevations, um, the, uh, the, on the north and south elevation, which is the uh, facing the hotel, you kind of see um, what the frontage of that building would look like, and that's on the top left drawing. And then last but not least, the, the hotel site. As I mentioned before, that is essentially uh, two wings of the building connected with the, uh, the bridge in between. Uh, the hotel does have ground level retail space as well as the hotel lobby, uh, dining for hotel patrons, a fitness gym, a pool, and many amenities that you would find for the hotel. So the bridge is here, right in the middle of the building. Brad, if you could repeat her question because the microphone can't pick her up. Sure. So I was asked the question uh, to, sh to kind of point out where the bridge is that's connecting the two components of the, of the hotel. So these are perspective renderings that are a little bit difficult to see, but as you can see here in the top photograph, I'm sorry, top elevation in the, in the lower elevation, that's a building that's that's been cut in two. So essentially, if you put those together, 
it would form the one lung elevation. And as we, which you can see right here to the right of the top drawing is all the glazing of the bridge that connects the left side of the building or the, the south side of the building and the north side of the building. Um, this distance here where you can see the Jeep driving underneath the bridge, that's 18 feet in height there. Mm -hmm. And then as we uh, go around to the other sides of the building, this would be the elevation that would be facing the front of the affordable housing building, building 6A. And then this would be the elevation as seen from Millbrae Avenue. As you can see in the foreground, um, you can see the canopy, which would be where drop off would occur for the hotel. You can see the signage, uh, vertical sign, uh, projecting sign off the building. Uh, you can see how they're using sort of the different materials and colors to sort of break uh, different planes of the building and create uh, um, visual interest. As well as on the ground floor, you can see the transparency and openness into the, into the ground floor. Uh, moving on to signage, there had been considerable conversation about city monument signage, um, whether or not there should be uh, two signs that are similar to what we have now, should we have new signs that are on the building, should the building be off of the, uh, the sign be off of the building, or should there be a median sign. Essentially what has been proposed um, is somewhat preferred by staff, of course that's fully before the commission is this uh, this scenario here, which would be a, a long, uh, a tall monument sign that does say Millbrae with uh, a smaller gateway at Millbrae station down on the on a monument sign here with tenant signage on, at the corner. The sign would look um, like this with, uh, as you can see, some of the scale of the uh, of the pedestrians in the in the foreground. There are other proposals as well. Uh, so, you know, it's, again, that's before council, uh, I'm sorry, before the commission. This was a sign that we felt um, played with some of the existing color and tone of some of the signs that we have in, in the city already. Uh, and then also some of the building signage and uh, branding signage of the development, the gateway at Millbrae Station. Again, this is the west elevation of the residential building. This would be seen primarily if you're headed um, eastward, heading towards the 101 freeway. That sign previously was up higher above, I th above the roof line that's been dropped down to sit more uh, on the building face itself. Um, public art, uh, this is sheet UD.10. Uh, this uh, lays out where the public art locations are proposed. And I do believe that their uh, team is here to talk about public art in more depth if, if that's the commission's desire. Uh, landscaping, the site has been fully landscaped. Again, on L1.2, we have a proposed landscape plan. And with that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make city staff recommendation. We're recommending the planning commission approve the design review permit and master sign permit for the Gateway at Millbrae Station based on the findings and conditions that we have in the resolution, which is 19-03, that's before you have it. Um, what I might recommend is um, if you have any questions for me, we can go ahead and ask those now. Otherwise, I know that their project team is here to answer questions, so go in more detail on any number of um, components or questions that the commission has. And with that, I'll go ahead and open up for questioning. I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for him right now? One quick one. So I, I just have one. It's more procedural than on the design review sure. itself. On the um, so this one, as with the other project, is um, going to be called up by city council for review as well um, for the approval. But we are approving tonight, or we, if we approve, we would be approving tonight. Um, in the conditions of approval, it mentions that it's uh, the approval is for a, a period of one year from date of approval, and I was just I was just curious if that's a standard thing and that it, it has to get extended by coming back in a year, especially if um, it continues. If it were to be approved tonight, and then it goes to city council, and that takes some time off of that, and then within a year, it would be coming back for an extension? Is that how? Well, typically what would occur is once a design approval is, um, 
is authorized once the once a building permit is issued it essentially effectuates the approvals so then um, everything would be carried by the building permits themselves but if that's a term that is too um, uh, is not enough time then I think I would have to defer to the project uh, project applicant to to uh, let us know how quickly they intend to okay the process yeah okay yes that's something I would wonder about because I it, it's a big project so I just thought it was interesting it's usually a year anyway but um, this is a bigger project so thank you that's all I have for now Mr. Meissner yes. Um, I, it's my understanding there has been some negotiations uh, in the background somewhat earlier about the uh, purchase of a piece of property that was city owned that requires a resolution in order for them to continue with the development near the BART station. It's some sort of a. <clears throat> there's, a there's a strip of land that's adjacent to Millbury Avenue uh, that the council's approved the price. So there was a $2.25 million. Uh, it's not been, we're still working on the purchase agreement. The city agreed that was a condition of their development agreement that they uh, acquire that, that they agree to a price with the city council. So after negotiation back between the developer and city council, there's been agreement as to the price of that strip of land. It's needed to add additional area to their development to qualify them mm -hmm. for it. Um, but it's within the right of way of Millbrae Avenue. So the city's going to retain an easement in order to be able to uh, maintain the bridge structure, but there's no other use really the city can put that property to. So the price has been agreed on in order from the developer to purchase that property from the city. Correct. And you set the price tag is five million. Two and a quarter. Thank you. And the developer agreement has been signed. Development, uh, the development agreement has been signed, but we have not signed a purchase agreement yet on this transfer of that property. So pending that little piece of transaction. Right. That would. It, I, I think the way we've looked at it is they have a. Uh, subdivision map that they're going to need to record and what we want to do is have the property be fully uh, in place uh, before we start splitting it up so right there's there's a it's complicated prior approval but there was a number of transfers to some old streets and some old lots and so just in terms of cleaning up the title and, and putting it in shape for eventual subdivision into their different developable lots that should occur first so We've discussed that with the developer. Right, so the key point I just wanted to understand is that the developer is you know, paying simple fee interest to purchase that property from the city. Essentially, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. The applicant can come up. Good evening, my name is Kelly Arardi. I'm a senior vice president of forward planning for Republic Family of Companies and a project executive for the Gateway at Melbury Station. Melissa Durkin's here tonight also, who's done a lot of work on the project. She's a project executive for Republic also. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time and your staff for all our hard work that they've done to get us here today. And also Brad Meisner's uh, presentation. He has pretty much covered a lot of what we would cover. We think we've, um, you know, we've been through several years of this process. We've been through uh, almost a year since the uh, site development plan was approved and the DA was approved through our, to get to our um, design review. We've had the three meetings, the study sessions. Uh, what we have here before you tonight is what we'd like you to approve. We agree with all the staff's conditions and our goal tonight is to answer all your questions that you have. Uh, have you uh, make a vote in favor and hopefully have this before the City Council on the 26th. Uh, from a standpoint of our schedule, just in general, we've uh, started our construction drawings for our site work as well as some of our vertical construction. And our plan is to hopefully be uh, starting construction and having some sort of groundbreaking ceremony end of the second quarter, early or mid third quarter sometime this year. So that's kind of our schedule. Again, um, I think probably the most effective way to do this is uh, all our consultants are here. Rather than walk you through your presentation, if you have specific questions, I can have them come up and answer those questions unless you'd like to like us to proceed differently. The only 
something that's unique is you have the, the three study sessions. Are, are you in the mic? Oh, mic? You had you had the three study sessions where you heard from us, you heard from city council, and you heard from the public. If you could just point out where you responded to those things, that would be helpful. Okay. Just to remind us. Um, I think, uh, check. Yep. I think I'll have our project uh, master project architect Chuck Tang come up and run you through the uh, high points Perfect. of the project, if that will work for you. Yep. Good evening. Um, thanks for the opportunity to come back to the commission. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the commission and as well as the city council for a lot of, I think it was really constructive comments and I think we took those comments to heart. I just want to, and also uh, the staff as well, Mr. Meissner has given us a lot of really good input. So I would just quickly highlight some of the changes. I think um, um, in general, I think the one thing that we want to re-emphasize re is that uh, the design, the architecture, the urban design, the planning is all really compliant with the, essentially the, the specific plan that you have in place. What we have reacted to is really a lot of the, the, the touch and feel of the materials, the colors, and also specifically along the, the station area, uh, what, what, what is called, what is termed iconic buildings. So we've actually done quite a bit of work in general. But I think at the end of the day, this is a revised rendering of the project. As on the right-hand side is really kind of the, the marquee corner that we've changed. We can go into details. But I think one thing that the entire team has worked really hard at is making sure the architecture is a reflection of the experience as you go through this, this sta the entire station area. And I think that's really important to all of us. And the architecture is there to enhance all that. Um, so, as Mr. Meissner had mentioned earlier, um, on this is the Millbrae Avenue view. One of the key elements of what we've done is articulating the building so that you don't have a wall. Actually, the plan itself calls for a pretty consistent wall. In, in our in analysis, that wall needs to be more undulated to create kind of these uh, kind of breathing space, especially south facing. Uh, courtyards for the residents as well as kind of creating a really interesting roof line and articulation to the building. Um, the, the one on the bottom is what you see is what we had proposed previously, submitted previously. A lot of the comments were about the homogeneity of the, of the buildings, the colors, and I think what we have done is uh, really taken your comments to heart and really kind of look at how we can articulate the building. The, the form of the building and the articulation of the building is, is still very lively and vibrant, but what we've done is kind of creating uh, a, a very different modulation to the building in terms of materials, colors, so there's a lot more variations uh, within the, uh, the each one of the building. I think the key element here is this corner where it's really relating to the station itself, which has a you know kind of a nice curved canopy along with a very contemporary office building as well. So we made a pretty mo uh, significant change there. Um, I think the one thing that we also want to point out is the depth of these courtyards, and it's kind of a shaded in the background. These, some of these courtyards are actually set back from the edge of the Millbrae Avenue by 70, 80 feet. And the width of this courtyard, for example, here is uh, about 80 feet across. And these are averaging about 55 feet across. So I think when we do these high density projects, it's also very important, not just for the architecture, but the kind of spaces that people live in. So we want it to be livable. Uh, the other thing is also important that, and as part of the guideline is that when we redesigned the project, but I think back two and a half years ago, <laughs> we completely revamped the entire building plans and the building party in order to create the architecture. It's not just pasting architecture on the facade. So this is a result of that ex uh, kind of um, exploration, creating much more livable space, but also creating more uh, better architecture. Um, this is really kind of the major elements that we've changed. What you see about on the bottom is what's fa facing the station area. There was some discussion, as Mr. Meissner has mentioned, um, the council has mentioned, can we do a curved building? Can we do the different forms, you know, that, that swooping roof? 
And then what the conclusion of this is when we looked at this building, and I think Bob and, and uh, our commercial office architect has done a fantastic job here, created a very subtle, calm building that is very glassy, but also have some of these really nice base elements. So we took the cue from, from that building, and some of these, uh, what we call rain screen elements, is actually a very expensive commercial material. We had talked to Republic and said, you know, the, I think the dialogue of this, this facade, which I think the council had issue with, should be much more contemporary, should be more in keeping with the office building next door, but not necessarily go into the curved facades and things like that, because in a, in a wood building, curved facades don't come out very well. And they're generally very cheap looking if you try to create these re, re, kind of, you know, the, the forms that's not really well made. So we intentionally kind of keep to a very subtle statement here that play off of the office building, but let the white, the beautiful canopy of the station area becomes the marquee element. And so that this actually have a much better dialogue with the office building and kind of play, play it becomes a very good neighbor with the, the office building. So you can see we kind of simplify the, the component. And as a matter of fact, some of the bay windows that is very prominent on the office building, uh, we actually use that as a cue uh, 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 kind of a, a, a design cue to, to, to kind of articulate our building and making the facade more simple. Um, the other thing that I think is a marquee element, and the council member also mentioned, is that there was some concerns about the structural quality of the signage uh, and how the sign uh, kind of adhered to the building. So we actually took that into account and said, okay, well, let's, let's make, make the building more of a backdrop with signage so that uh, that's not a concern, but still a very important element. Um, so this is the, the elevation. So I, wa I want to highlight the, the kind of the brown panel area, which is shown on our revised material board here. Is this material here? Maybe I can pass it around. It's actually a very expensive commercial kind of a facade material that we have applied to that entire facade just more in keeping with the quality of the, the office building and also kind of create the differentiation to the rest of the building. Um, and then within the garden lane as well, um, I think it's really important to note that in the garden lane area, uh, we actually had um, simple, so, oh, actually, let me, let me go back to the material for a moment. What you see on the boards in front of you is the uh, market rate departments. And you can see that um, there's a lot of different colors and material changes within the body of the building. And then there's also kind of a highlight of the materials um, uh, along the, the, the station area. Um, and then on the Rollins Road Gateway, uh, one of the things that I want to highlight is we, um, and I think it was mentioned earlier, we actually had a marquee sign on the building and there was some confusion about whether that marquee sign is for the city versus the project. We, we personally actually still like the marquee sign, but in due respect to the city's concern, we actually took the marquee sign off the building and actually put it on the, on the ground so that it's much more identifiable. And then you can see on this rendering, it's important that instead of kind of hodgepodge of different color, we actually made the color blocking much more substantial. So we kept the, the uh, building on the, on the uh, uh, corner lighter, brighter, and then on, on some of the intermediate building, we actually made it a little bit more saturated color. And that was another comment from, I think, two of the council members, or two or three of the council members that, that wanted to have a little bit more bolder color uh, and uh, stronger presence. And so this is the, I won't go into this, but the materiality um, actually wraps around. This is actually taking away the office building and looking the inside of that garden lane that you generally don't see from the street, but that as a pedestrian that you would see. What we've done, this is before, uh, has a lot more paler and grayer and kind of not very uh, attractive color. What we've done is basically taken that same concept from uh, the Millbrae Avenue and applied it even to the garden lane so that um, you, you see a lot more variations. The other thing that I want to highlight on the board um, there's quite a bit of kind of porcelain uh, tile material as well as some really interesting rain screen material. Uh, it's actually a pretty expensive material that we, we elected to apply a lot of those materials on the base of the building where you can touch it and feel it on, along the retail frontage. And then uh, going on to the affordable housing project, 
Um, one of the things that I thought w was really Im important to note from our comments was it, it was it, the previous scheme was kind of blend. And so being this is kind of the iconic, you know, kind of anchor uh, coming down Rollins Road before you, s you turn into the garage, and then also the relationship with the, with the hotel, what we've done is um, highlighted a little bit more kind of this corner with a material change as well as a more marquee signs here to, to create a little bit more bolder expression. Thank you. And so this is kind of what we had before um, on the lower left-hand corner. So it's pretty bland and there, the, the, uh, although uh, I think the, a lot of the council members like the swooping roof, so we're maintaining the sweeping roof, but there was some disconnect about what the rest of the, the building wall, some of the taller walls are. So we actually created a, a very, uh, well, first of all, going back to this, we, we made a much stronger kind of a presence on that corner by having a, a kind of a, a stronger color and material kind of uh, modulation. Uh, we c created a much stronger metal fin uh, element that not only ties through the roof and the marquee sign, but also kind of wraps the edge of the building and becomes an element that ties in the rest of the building. Because there were some comments about the diamond walls that it was kind of nondescript. What are you going to put on there? So we actually, that metal panel become a really good thread through the, the, the different parts of the architecture. So you can kind of see what we've done also, there was a lot of kind of horizontal layering that was uh, the, in the pro project proposal before that I think was a little bit more almost distracting. So what we've done is kind of creating using these kind of modulating color, more vertical modulations to, to just simplify the building and make it a little bit more cleaner. And you can see that, you know, before the, the, the lower one is the before and, and, uh, uh, and then our current proposal kind of have a little bit darker color and more warmer color as well as using these metal panel as an accent. And you can kind of see a, a kind of a sample of that a metal panel that it is, you know, is very well used for signage as a background signage, but also it becomes a very nice fabric, a kind of a texture on the building. And then with that, uh, this is the hotel project. I think uh, the hotel project kind of speak for itself. I think one thing that I would highlight is on the corner, I think the Planning Commission, I can't remember, those is getting some comments a little bit kind of mixed up between the council and, and Planning Commission chairing. But um, this corner was a little bit less uh, kind of nondescript before, and there was a comment, why don't we do something with this corner here to create a little bit more articulation similar to the residential building? So I think our hotel architect, was, I don't think he's here tonight, but what we've done is kind of carved out a little bit more windows on this corner as well as uh, this kind of uh, kind of in, infill corner here to create more transparency. But I think they've done a fantastic job opening the retail uh, ground floor here and create a much more kind of iconic corner uh, on the other side of Rollins Road. And also they, I think they have actually expanded some of the glass uh, storefront here on the parking lot side of the building to create a little bit more uh, stronger, stronger presence as well. And I think with that, I'll stop with the signage or the landscape. Great. Uh, thank you, Jack. Just to put a little uh, cross the T here, the what you saw there was from the notes we took from all the study sessions. We reviewed the tape. We made the changes. We then went to your staff to make sure we were getting things right and showed them what we were doing and made sure that we got our best interpretation and uh, illustration of what you were looking for. So we made every reasonable change that we saw requested in the study sessions to bring this here before you this evening. Thank you. Do we have specific questions for them? Not right now. Go ahead. Oh, procedure, Brad. Do we want to do the signs later? Or all are we? We're gonna. Yeah, I just, are we gonna jump into the signage now, or do we have questions? 
Yeah, I mean, it, to, you know, through the, through the chair, if, you, if your preference is to see more of the, the sign options that they have, they can certainly run through them for you. And then if you feel like you've got a full view of the full development, including the buildings, the signage, landscaping, those types of things, then if you want to open up for public comment, that might be appropriate. But I think maybe just making sure that you have a full view of what it is that they're proposing, notwithstanding just the buildings, signage, landscaping, those types of things as well. Okay. I'm okay with the building. I would ask if he's going to. I would ask if he's going to move forward with the signage. But if anyone has any questions, we should do the up to here. Okay. Uh, can, just a quick. I'll just do quick. I have a lot, but I'll do it later. But um, just a quick one about. I think there was some comments about the art walk now Paseo. Can you go through what the changes were made there? Sure. Um, Sean, just as a comparison. Uh, Melissa, I want you to come up here too. I think uh, we, Melissa is uh, again one of our project executives and has really worked on the nuts and bolts of this project and can probably walk you through the, did you say the art walk or did you want the, uh, the linear Paseo? Yes, exactly. That's the same thing. Isn't well, the art walk, walk now linear Paseo? Yes. Okay. Right. Well, we, well there, we have a, uh, our linear Paseo is between the market rate building and Millbury Avenue. And then the art walk is what we would call everything on Garden Lane. So again, Melissa, why don't you, you want to walk through the linear Paseo first. And what page is that, please? I'm sorry. What page is that? This is UD 12. So some of the comments that we received for the linear park or Paseo um, we're to kind of keep it simple, keep it focused on maybe dog amenities. So that's what we've done. We've kind of removed some of the significant art features and preferred to kind of keep those in areas that are going to be more highly utilized by the public. So if you see the revised drawings that are in front of you, we've added, like I said, more dog friendly amenities. So there are specific areas that have this synthetic lawn or turf that dogs could utilize. I believe one is fenced in so dogs can kind of run around without a leash. Um, there's a couple areas where you'll have seating and then like a dog water fountain and dog bags um, if you need those as well. Um, the only piece of art that will be here will probably be this mural, so some sort of kind of abstract art piece um, that could be painted along the Millbrae overpass since that right now is just kind of like a blank concrete wall. Um, also the gates that are utilized at either end, those we've kind of just simplified as well, removed kind of the miscellaneous pieces of art, and so now it's just kind of a clean, modern um, metal gate. So any other questions for this Paseo? Like I said, just kind of simplified, dog-friendly amenities, benches, seating, synthetic lawn. And this is where you can walk into those little courtyards that he explained, right? So this um, Paseo, it's utilized as um, publicly accessible open space, okay. which means that it has to be open to the public for a minimum of 12 hours a day. So it would be locked at night, but during the day it could be utilized by residents and the rest of the community. Thank you. Yes, any other questions? Well, did, did, was there anything else about the art you wanted to point out? Um, or are we good? Let's see. Oops. Um, so on UD 11, the median barrier um, that runs along Rollins Road and is basically there to prevent pedestrians from running across Rollins Road, we had originally designed it with some I will call them like street signs that are considered art. Um, the feedback that we received is that it was kind of too distracting um, and that it could potentially maybe cause an accident if um, you know drivers are looking at that, kind of maybe trying to read what's on the sign. So we've come back and we've basically created a more simplified modern median barrier. Um, and with city's comment, we've also added um, some landscaping and some vines that would grow up that barrier to kind of help 
kind of soften it and add some nice greenery to the area without being distracting. Um, and then number six is the vertical art screen. Um, we received comments that maybe that was um, maybe not exciting enough. So I'm actually, Evie, if you want to come up, she's been helping us. She's our art consultant um, with SB Fine Arts, um, and she has some kind of great ideas for that vertical art screen. And that location is within the BART Plaza, so it's kind of at the end and would separate um, that South Station Road, the street that's kind of, you know, underneath the BART canopy, and then the rest of kind of the pedestrian plaza area. Right. Hello. Thank you. Um, so the changes for the Linda Rainsford screen came about because I think it was partly just a little more clarity. And so we um, collaborated with the artist and HMH to come up with a really beautiful screen just on its own structurally. And then the artist was able to come back into that and create what you're seeing here. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lot more um, sort of linear interest in there as opposed to being just a straight sign. There's more open space in there. And the idea is that this will be a very interactive um, piece of art where we're going to combine names and places from Melbray that are significant. And there is an opportunity in the future for the artists to actually collaborate with people in the community to come up with what they think would be the best things to have on this signage. And we sort of have an idea that maybe school groups or tourists can come and kind of find these gems of Melbray in their past, present. Um, and then the other change that we did make also was about the choo-choo train on top of the, um, the sign when you enter on Rollins Road. And that was in response to this idea that, yes, we have this great history of transportation, but let's also make sure that we bring everything into the present and into the future. And so we've moved that to a BART train, which actually the artist is really excited about. Um, rendering that it's a little more sleek and a little more modern and um, so I think that was the, uh, the other change that we made in response to your comments thank you mr. Arati if you can um, help us walk through the what the pedestrian experience going to be as you exit the BART station, walk down the BART plaza, between Garden Lane pedestrian path, what that's gonna look like. Sure, let me, uh, Melissa, can you help me get, <clears throat> let's just get an overview. We'll do one Start here. Great. Um, First, kind of an overall concept of making this project successful at the ground level. And that one is architecture, and then one is um, how we set up and merchandise our retail mix and where we put it. Um, the BART patrons and the Caltrain, Caltrain patrons are only one part of making this project successful. We need to make sure that this is designed and we have that the community will use it and people from outside the community will use it, it, it making it a special place. So uh, again, the, we have two gathering places really on the project. Uh, the first one you can see in this rendering as you walk off the BART escalator, you will have a choice to either go left to your car or right into our project. Um, our preference is that you go right into our project. Uh, the, uh, couple things that will attract you to that is one, just the landscaping that we have, the open space. That space can be programmed and we intend to do that with events such as uh, public markets, uh, jazz festivals, movie nights, any uh, type of public uh, private event that attracts people and makes this place special. Uh, we'll also have gateway signage as you come down the uh, BART escalator to lead you over to the right and then the next thing we want to do is we want to get you from the right walking through the plaza down to the east we want to bring you in the center of the plaza and is there another good elevation to that melissa um got a, uh, just just the uh okay this this brings you to the center of the plaza and again 
This area is a natural gathering place because on the left hand side you can see the uh, it's the lobby entrance to the office building and we also have a uh, uh, second story where a lot of our retail parking could be where people can come down kind of a grand stairway and empty into an open area. On the right side the lobby and main entrance into the our market rate apartment complex empties in the same spot and if I can find a spot on the site plan you will see that that is a larger area and again can be programmed for special events and be attractive. The other thing this does is we've kind of got a l fairly long linear space and in retail you need to break things up into blocks and the way this project has been done it's almost like you have two blocks the way you come in. Um, this area here that is has a lot of ins and outs and uh, uh, cuts creates the middle of the block. So let's go to great now the um, I'm going to jump to the entrance of the project. Uh, in order to make this, uh, I think my opinion, um, I've got 30 years of retail experience. I've done spe I've done um, small projects, big projects. I've done infill projects. I've done projects with civic uses, uh, office uses, retail uses, residential uses, and mix them all together and try and make them successful. What you have at the entrance here, I think, is you can tell by the ground level there are storefronts on both sides of uh, Rollins Road and Millbury Avenue that lets you know there is retail here. Uh, that's real important. Then the signage that you can see at the base of the building, that lets people know that there's retail and there's something going on in here too. As you, and you can see on these uh, views here, there is, we've got two levels of uh, sidewalk. One upper, one lower. On the upper levels there's an opportunity to create outside seating. Uh, put tables and chairs out there, uh, items that when people are driving by, even if they're not turning in, they know something's going on there and it, it will uh, scream of activity. Let's go to the, do we have an overall site plan, Melissa, that I can, well, let's see. Art numbers. Okay. Just need to get to the overall view. Okay. So, um, once you enter our project, we've done something that is pretty uh, tried and true in retail and uh, is uh, something that helps with the success of the project. We have four corners here at the corner of Garden Lane and uh, Rollins Road. Each of those corners has a retail space. Uh, that's very important as people come in that they see that there is, again, activity at this spot they see restaurants or other uses that entices them to come in now or come visit later. So, and again, as you come down, oops, what did I just, as you come down Garden Lane, um, again, this open area where the uh, office empties out and the residential empties out. Again, is a very nice gathering area. We have it uh, where we can program it again with all those events that we talked about, uh, movie nights or, you know, uh, Christmas lighting festival, all those sort of things. Uh, and we believe that'll create a uh, sense of place, a distinct identity for this project that will complement the retail that you have in town already. So, that is kind of a, a tour of what we'd like to do and will do on Garden Lane. And again, as uh, Evie Simon outlined, there are pieces of public art in there too that people can uh, enjoy while they're getting their cup of coffee, getting a meal, uh, waiting to go to a Giants game at our, uh, at our brew pub, those sort of things. So that's the, that's the vision in a Reader's Digest form. I mean, as you walk through, as you walk down the escalator from the BART station, as you walk towards the market rate housing building, the northeast corner, what do you see there? What, what? Well, what we've done there is we have uh, our TDM coordinator's office and flex space. 
Uh, our TDM coordinator will um, be there certain hours of the day. We will more than likely have TV screens up there that are announcing what's going on in the project, either uh, from a standpoint of events, uh, train schedules, BART schedules, uh, things that are happening in the community as a, as a whole. It'll be a, a nice place for people to find out what's going on in the project, and it will catch people's eyes as they get off the BART train. And again, the uh, we have 45,000 square feet of retail spaces, which is what is required in our specific plan. And uh, again, our goal is to get people not to stop there, but get them in the middle of our project. That's where we want them to go. We want them to go to all the other retail. So that'll be, a, that'll be an active space. It'll be lit. It'll have a retail storefront. And again, if uh, community people want to use it for a meeting room, they can also do that too. So it'll be flex space also. Do you have a floor plan for that 5B building? Yes. Which one? Which page? It's A3.01. A301. Yeah, it's kind of a small print. It's kind of hard to read. There's, there are enlargements of the ground floor spaces. If you are okay. interested in those the A303 so the the leasing office um, the fitness center the bike kitchen and the TDM flex space right so you have a TDM flex space along with a galleria and then inside there is a bike kitchen correct what is a bike kitchen I'm sorry I'm bike kitchen is an area where a uh, occupant of our building can go in and repair their bike there's a uh, tools, equipment, it's well lit, it's uh, nicely displayed. You'll, you'll see them in almost any uh, new apartment project. They're very popular and, uh, and a, again, it's well lit, it's a very attractive space from a standpoint of uh, merchandising. So and then, and then as you walk through that, you have, there's a fitness center behind the Galleria the rest of it and there's a, some leasing space after that I'm looking at it from west to east sure uh, um, yeah there's a galleria there's the uh, the workout area for the tenants and our occupants in the market rate as well as um, the occupants of our veterans preferred as you recall there's a condition that the veteran preferred building gets to has a right to use the amenities in the market rate building uh, being on the ground floor uh, it's attractive space first of all you, you'll see a lot of uh, athletic facilities that have ground floor space uh, well lit uh, show that something's going on it also is very very easy access for our, our uh, veteran preferred folks to just walk over and not have to go through any sort of extra security to get to uh, one of our amenities so um, go back to page one of your presentation as you begin your presentation, Mr. Arati. Uh, not quite that. It's, it's really like sort of the perspective view of the garden lane as you walk off the BART escalator. There you go. That's one. Which is same as this plan right here, UD08. Yes. Okay. This corner right here, which is what it's on your floor plan as the gallery and TDM flex space. Correct. That's not a retail space, or is it a retail space? It's a. Uh it's a TDM flex space. T TDM, I'm sorry, what does it stand for? Transportation Demand Management. There, we have a person that will uh, advise everybody on the transportation options in the project and will uh, we'll manage that for the entire project. So, you wanted, what do you want to do? The bike area you want to do. 
uh, before that, my, my question is really leading towards, you know, I'm, when I'm reading the plan, I'm seeing this t UD08. At this corner of the, of the 5B building, it says signage, that corner have a hagen das sign on it. I mean, it looks like a retail space being portrayed there. My rendering doesn't have hagen das on it. And uh, again, I, I think we get into a, you know, it's a TDM space. That's what we're going to use it for. Uh, the 45,000 square feet of retail, we've chosen spaces that we believe will be the most successful. This is a rendering. Um, if you, uh, the, and we had a discussion about this with your staff, that renderings are depictions, but they're not perfectly accurate. If uh, what was presented to you in your package were elevations uh, that are accurate and what uh, Mr. Meisner and his staff will check against what's going to be built. Hmm. So basically these renderings are not exactly what is going to get built, well, is, is what uh, you're trying to say. Check, check and walk you through uh, the rendering. Uh, we worked on it in, in detail. If I may clarify, it, um, in almost every one of our TOD project, there is something called essentially a bike station. So you know, to call it a TDM office sounds a little bit less glamorous, but the idea is that what happened is bike storage used to be sit in the, you know, the kind of the, the guts of the parking garage, right? That's the, how apartment used to be. But now people are, with these TOD projects, they're basically part of the amenity space. So if you go to Redwood City, there's a project in Redwood City, that bike storage area and kind of the bike station, as we call it, is actually right out at the storefront area. So the idea of this concept is you know really to Bart's notion about utilizing bike as a is the more primary mode of uh, transportation is to make those bicycle accessibility and also the visibility stronger. Uh, so that's the intent. So the idea of the if you see some of the project in Redwood City, uh, I did my first project in uh, Fruitvale Bart Station is actually one of the earliest uh, bike station station in the in the project itself. The station area, it, the bike station itself becomes essentially a retail uh, area, retail feel, because what happened is the, all the, the, the storage within the, the place as well as the, the uh, repair areas is actually part of that kind of retail experience. If you, uh, we have projects in Oakland, a uh, similar kind of situation, right on uh, by the uh, Jefferson, by the federal building, a very, very uh, uh, urban conditions, very similar conditions here as well. So I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is this. I mean, I understand the need of using, you know, bike racks and, and the TMD, TDM space and the bike kitchen. Uh, I think my question is more leading towards the allocation of certain space of certain part of your ground floor space and how it will be best utilized. I guess I'm not disputing the fact that bikes are important, especially on a TOD project. We, you know, we want people to, to exercise, we want people to use public transportation, and therefore bikes become sort of a, um, sort of a last mile destination tool, and I understand that. Um, I'm just questioning whether or not that particular corner being the most prominent corner as you walk off your BART station, right? It would be a perfect spot, you know, you're gonna see hundreds of thousands of travelers on a regular basis every day, you know, through that corner. Um, having that being the bike kitchen may not be the best use of space. Rather, you could use it as a commercial space for other commercial purposes. Um, first of all, I think you're, the, whatever rendering you're looking at is the wrong rendering. It's dated. If you have something that says Hagen Dawes on it, it's not in the plans or the before you this evening. Uh, second thing, um, we, have a, we have a professional management company brokers that have helped us merchandise this building, where things go, and uh, what is before you is what we believe will be the most successful. And we uh, understand you may have a different opinion, but what's before you is what we'd like you to vote on and uh, approve this evening. Do we have more right now, or do we want to hear from the public and then come back? What? Yeah. You want to do that? Okay. All right, so we may have more later. Thank you. <coughs> Where's my... Okay, we'll move on to the um, public comment part. I have one, two, three, four right now. Oh, here comes number five. Thank you. 
So we'll keep these comments to three minutes and the little box here will tell you. It'll be green for the most of the time, turn yellow when you're getting close and red means please wrap it up. Okay, Nathan Chan. <coughs> Hello, uh, Nathan Chan. I live at 151 El Camino Real in Melbray. I have, I have to say I appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Meisner's timeline. I had forgotten how long this whole process had been going along for. Um, and I've been to quite a few of these uh, public hearings, both for the City Council and the Planning Commission. Um, I have to say like a lot of the, um, Although I've been, you know, supportive of the project for a long time, I think I've been really impressed with the uh, changes that have been made by the developer in response to all of the uh, public comments. I particularly thought I, I did notice that the aesthetic of the affordable building uh, was bland, as was uh, pointed out by one of the consultants earlier. Uh, but it, it does it it looks almost as appealing as the market rate building at this point. And I emphasize this because uh, Millbury desperately needs uh, aff affordable housing. I mean, it's it's important for our community to be welcoming for pe to people of all different backgrounds, um, one. Uh, two, uh, you know, at the sort of state housing policy level, I just looked at uh, Milbray's uh, uh, regional housing needs allocation numbers uh, through 2023, and uh, there are no permitted, uh, there's no permitted units for the moderate income, low income, or very low income levels right now. Uh, what this project appears to do, at least, is definitely take 20, address 20 units for the moderate income bracket and I don't quite know what income level falls into the affordable building. I'd be interested to hear what it, what where it would be uh, addressed. But uh, you know, this project would go some way towards uh, addressing that. So, fulfilling our obligations uh, that that are obligations to create more housing as directed by the state and also making this community a more uh, welcoming place for people of all different backgrounds. So um, I think uh, this is one of the most important parts of the uh, project and definitely uh, a big, big reason why um, it'd be great if it, we could get started. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Stephen Yeh. Plant Commission members, I'm really proud that of the uh, city of Millbrae. You've done a great job. I can see a lot of I can see a lot of give and take that has been taking place, and I think that the uh, Republic has been very responsive. And I think that uh, I can see that the uh, professional staff and the uh, council and the commission have been working very hard on this. Uh, comparing uh, Millbrae uh, is a small city. Uh, to uh, Berlin Gaming, your neighbor to the, to the north of uh, San Bruno. This project will uh, put Millbury at the forefront, I think. Uh, it's going to make a, a big difference. It's going to raise the property values. Uh, it's an ideal uh, uh, use of, uh, uh, a mixed use of that uh, site that you have. And uh, I really in, uh, encourage you, uh, after all this uh, tussle back and forth, just to go ahead and improve the design, get it over with and done. And uh, sooner the better. Thank you. Alex Melendrez. Hello, Millbury Planning Commission and staff. My name is Alex Melendrez, and I am here representing the Housing Leadership Council of San Mateo County, or HLC. HLC is a nonprofit uh, dedicated to working with communities and their leaders to produce and preserve quality affordable homes. Uh, we're he here again to support the council approved and HLC endorsed Gateway at Millbrae Development. Uh, Gateway at Millbrae already complies with the goals, policy, and design guidelines of the Millbrae Station Area Specific Plan. The developers have also incorporated all reasonable comments from the 
uh, three previous study sessions uh, that started back in September of 2018. Uh, the creation of much needed homes for vulnerable populations located near what is one of the best transit hubs in the entire Bay Area has the potential to shine Millbrae as a leader in smart growth with dignity and empathy. However, however, further delays will only stifle that potential as more and more families are pushed out of the cities and the towns they grew up in. The Millbrae at Gateway development is something individuals all across the peninsula are talking about and looking forward to. Uh, saying how the proposed development can be an amazing example of how to build housing in the peninsula and how needed these homes are. Uh, I myself am a 26 year old who lives with his parents right at the uh, Milbrae San Bruno border. I've spent my entire K through 12 education here in the Milbrae uh, school system and spend a majority of my time here in this great city. Uh, both HLC and myself can't wait to attend a groundbreaking ceremony later this year. Uh, HLC would like to support the expert and professional staff recommendations and thank the Planning Commission for their leadership in moving this development forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ken Abreu. Good evening, I'm Ken Abreu. I'm representing the Central Peninsula Church Veterans Ministry. And uh, I'd like to first of all uh, say that I think the staff has done a really good job in terms of improving this project and moving it to the point where, where it is. And I think that the developer has you know, followed through on the commitments and requests that have come from both the commission and the council. And uh, you know, our veterans ministry particularly is concerned about the veterans and the need for the housing in this area. It's critical. And so I would really hope that we could move forward with this project uh, quickly so that uh, later on this year we can have a groundbreaking and, and get these, uh, these units built so that uh, people can start living there. Thank you. Thank you. Marge Cola Pietro. <clears throat> Getting settled here. Good evening. I've att uh, having attended the last city council meeting, I believe that the developer and their project partners have done a thorough job of improving improvements, and um, they were explained to you what the city council had done, and I hope that you recognize and agree that they have. Uh, fully complied uh, with those uh, requests. Uh, I have a question. Uh, if someone I, in the presentation, I heard about uh, building movement, and I'd like somebody to explain what you mean by building movement. Is it a physical thing or just a visual thing? The next thing I want to say is the way, and I've said this at the last meeting, the way the words on signage is written going where people are having to turn their head sideways to read what words are is not normal and it's um, whether pedestrians or vehicles drivers or walkers that have to move their head and twist their neck is a very big distraction and any distraction to people in movement is a hazard and unsafe so please um, consider making a recommendation that it be uh, that the words be uh, written laterally without anybody ha um, having to turn their and twist their heads around, please. Um, and the, an example of that is the Milbrae sign, Milbrae Theater sign. And the next thing I want to say is um, that the regarding the TOD um, bike area that has just been discussed and explained. Uh, I just want to reiterate that bicycles be, are very, very popular, and they're a very uh, much used mode of transportation these days, and I think it would be an advantage to us to have in the site, off the freeway, off transportation, a place such as this where people can say, hey, 
this is really terrific, instead of, as someone said, you know, back in the building or back in a dark garage. So in this case, I would just say trust the experts and every individual uh, when assign the, that what they do when they are assigning spaces is very, very important because they are the day-to-day -day experts doing this. And the people that have come to Millbrae to work on both of the projects and, the, in fact, the whole entire development, these are people who become part of the fabric of our community because they're helping us from ground up. And they want the very best because their reputation and their, you know, their heart and souls are put into it, into this. I've seen a project that Mr. Muzi has done, which is a retail place, and I've also seen uh, projects that uh, Republic has. And in, finally, I just want to encourage you to look at the Gateway website for the supporters of this project. Thank you so much. Thank you, Margaret Fung. Hi, dear commissioners. Uh, I'm Margaret Fong. I am uh, one of the economic vitality commissioners in Mill Bay. As you know, um, you probably know that one of the responsibility of economic vitality commissioner is to transform the existing downtown into a vibrant district as well as um, bringing more revenue to the city. Now, I understand that this project is gonna accomplish quite a bit um, with the way how the current scope is. It's gonna bring a lot of property tax to the San Mateo County. And I think that it is gonna be a very vibrant district once this project is built. However, I question that how much revenue is gonna bring to the city of Mill Bay. The reason I'm asking this is that there is limited amount of commercial space, as well as the fact that the hotel in the current project scope is only a three-star hotel. Uh, and um, it is an extended stay three-star hotel. So if from that perspective, I don't know how much revenue it's gonna bring to our city. Um, Mr. Developer, could we consider having a four-star hotel that will generate higher revenue to our city? Our city is having a lot of aging infrastructure and our Mill Bay School District is lack of funding. As, Kath, as um, Commissioner Craig and Commissioner David, last Sunday, you guys seen that we, work, we need to work really hard to help raise funding for our school. Our PCBA, um, directors have worked a lot in order to generate more funding for our school. So from my perspective, I'm urging you guys to seriously consider having a uh, higher end hotel so that it will bring more revenue to our city. Um, one of the things that I also want to bring up is that El Wancho is going to be gone very soon. We're going to lose that part of the TOD tax. We need to find replacement revenue for our city. And I think that with this project, if we so scope it properly, it will find the replacement revenue. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any more speaker slips. Last call. We're going to close the public comment. Okay. Do the applicants want to respond to any of that or anything specific you heard? I'd like to thank all the public for their comments. Uh, from a standpoint of um, what we're developing, I think, as you know, we already have our approvals in place in the development agreement that defines um, our buildings, our hotel, those items. So I think, in summary, that ship has sailed, but I'm available to answer any other comments. Okay. Building movement. Oh. Um, Jack, you want to come up and talk about what you meant by building movement? Sorry, March. Okay. 
apologize, English is my second language, <laughs> but uh, the buildings don't move, but uh, what we try to do is, uh, uh, yeah, but, but our intention is that the buildings creates uh, kind of spatial relationships that allows the building to, you know, as you travel down the road or walk down the street, there's move. That it feels like there's movement in the building, meaning there's articulations, there's kind of ups and downs, and you know, kind of, you know, kind of layering to the building. Uh, hopefully, that makes sense. Uh, hopefully not. Yeah. So. I'm sorry, one last comment. With regard to the lettering on the Millbrae signage, we're certainly open to changing the lettering where it's, uh, as uh, Ms. Colapirito had uh, suggested. Thank you. Okay, discussion? Questions? For applicants, staff? I have a, a lot, it's mostly like clarification or a lot of other things. Um, I'm just going to go in order from the packet. So if you, um, on UD03, the site development plan, UD03. This is a perfect time to show the public how you're able to access plans online to the city's website and events. <clears throat> for every meeting, we upload all the plans so that they're accessible for anyone to see them. Okay, thank you. So just my first question is, um, in terms of the, ho so the, the hotel building, um, toward the right of it, to the east, um, that section is a, what is that section? It's, it's just the hotel um, courtyard? Is, this what is that? Say? Yes. It's a landscape area, isn't it? Landscape, landscape and parking, correct? Yeah, it's, so... Uh, not, uh, I mean, I see the parking and then right below it where the greenery is around there. Right. What is so that space? There are the existing PG&E towers that are in there. So around it would be planting areas and then there would be some hardscape that could have some permanent seating and tables. Okay. Not necessarily programmed for anything, but just kind of open for the public. Okay, so there is that walk. So if there is a walkway that goes straight from the sidewalk. It almost looks like at Millbury. Yeah, Library so there Avenue. would be a connection from the public sidewalk that would kind of go in between the towers into that plaza area. Um, and you could access the parking lot that way. And then I believe there's um, an entry into the hotel on that side of the street, too. Okay. And, and kind of related to that is because you do have the gas station that's right next to it. And um, I'm just curious about what that border looks like between your project and where the gas station Back, so the gas station is basically where that box is, I think. Right. So it looks like in in kind of the the area that separates our project from the gas station, it would just be planting area. Just planting area, and it's level, same one level. So I don't know if there's a grade difference there. Okay. There could be, but I don't think it'd be anything significant. Okay, thank you. And um, I'm just going to go in order of the pages, so it's going to vary. In, um, so you, D05. Which is, I think, just the next one. So, on the corners of Millbury Avenue and the Rollins Road, you have um, movable seating. Uh, who's taking care of that? That's that's an example of if we had a tenant that was a restaurant, mm -hmm. they would um, put their own seating out there, and they'd be the leases would say they'd be responsible for it. 
Okay, so the goal is to have restaurants probably on those corners. Is yeah, well, that? Uh, we think those are two really good spots for uh, restaurants, coffee shops, things like that that create activity and invite you into the project. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to clarify. And then um, the next one, you do seven on. How do I describe this? Right, almost in the middle of the pedestrian plaza, um, north of. Uh, North of Site 5B, right, right there, um, where you're at, the pedestrian plaza. Um, you have circular lines going, so that's, can you just describe what that is? Is that stair seating? <clears throat> Sorry, losing my voice. So going from building 5B, and then right, um, there's that pedestrian plaza right toward the center. And then you have some circular lines radiating off from 5B. In that, okay, so the rectangle that you were, no, the rectangle that you were in, the bigger one, right, and then just the bottom left there. What are those? Those are our um, art pieces. The circular lines are the art pieces? Paving pattern, the circular? Is it just a pa pattern? Oh, oh yeah, okay. the round areas. Okay. Right. Sean Taylor, he's our landscape architect. Thank so. Thank you. I lost it. There we go. Hi, everybody. Thanks for uh, uh, allowing me to come up here and speak to that area. So, so that area is um, activated with tables, um, little art sculptures, and the circular lines that you're seeing are just um, within the paving patterns to help define that spot. So they're, they're not steps or anything like that. Okay, but then you do have uh, above that then that that's, that is a stair seating for the office building, is that? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. This, this is the stairway for the office. To the office. Building. Yeah, a little closer to the microphone, please. This is the stairway for the office building, correct. Okay, thank you. It, I'm just trying to get a visual of if I'm sitting, standing there, what is it that I'm seeing as I go around, look around, so. Okay, um, thank you. And then um, UD09, I'm just gonna blast through as fast as I can. So, so this is the um, end of East Station Road, UD09. Yes, that's, that's right. Um, right, so you have the East Station Road, the end of East Station Road, and then there's that turnaround for the buses to be able to turn around. Um, I'm trying to get a, a feel for that plaza area that is, uh, that's adjacent to it. Um, what's between the turnabout and the plaza where people are walking? Uh, Sean, you wanna, uh, you're talking this is it, right here? Right, so that area. So is, there's like, I'm assuming it's a raised curb or of some amount, or I, I just can't, the, uh, what do you have there? It's, Part of it's a roll curb because there's a emergency vehicle access that comes from that circle uh, to um, South Station Road. And also there's a 20 foot wide emergency vehicle exit that runs all the way through Garden Lane up to Rollins Road again. Okay, so, um, so it's a rolled curb, the whole, the whole circle? around it um, I or believe, just sections of it i think just sections some of it will be a um, regular curb but it'll be rolled for the eva where we need it okay which is that i think at the bottom uh, toward the bottom there's a maintenance vehicle access is that that's what you're referring to yeah it comes from down below you can see the dark dashed lines you need mike please oh, sorry so the EVA is running through this area and then goes up and then vehicle access into that spot happens right here, I think, where you were talking. So, okay. yeah, it would be rolled there for... That. And the rest of it would just be a curb, a straight curb? I believe so. We believe so. I mean, okay. it, may, it may vary slightly in the plans to meet BART's needs because uh, they have a a cash truck that uh, takes deliveries and sometimes it needs to come up there too. So in the 
in the final plans it may vary slightly but that's what you see there is mainly what's going to happen okay i um just to comment f for me i i can comment now right yeah um I was, because I don't see anything there as kind of a divider between where you have buses that are turning around and you have pedestrians that are walking, you know, to and from BART station. So have you thought about putting something there, like either nice planters or bollards or, so, and just having cars in close proximity to pedestrians and then you have cars that are trying to turn around in that area? I'm, we all have, uh, we without all have any the same, barrier. We all have the same um, concern. And what we will have is more than likely what's going to happen as you come down as you come down the escalator from the BART station, uh, you will not be able to walk directly out anymore. That'll be walled off, and you will have to go left or right out of there, which will keep you away from walking into the bus traffic or close to the bus traffic. So, so it'll be walled off, and right. Well, the um, right now when you walk down the escalator here, you can walk straight out. To the plaza there will be a barrier my maybe not even a wall just a barrier that forces you to go left or right so if somebody's walking with their cell phone they don't walk right out into the middle of the uh, circle okay and then what happens if somebody is coming from say the say the garden lane and then they're walking up they want to go up north and now there's a barrier around the escalator so they have to go around it well there's is that no, they'll, um, right at the roof line of the escalator, I don't think the escalator is going to grow at all. It'll be in the same spot. So there'll be room to walk to the right around the escalator for pedestrian coming from Garden Lane. Right. So then they are going to be walking right pretty close around it to the curb to where the cars are going around. Sure. Same situation as any sidewalk near near buses, though. Yeah. I mean, I get that, but I'm saying they're turning they're turning around. You have people kind of dodging and not looking. They're not looking up, and I just I just thought it might be nice to consider something a little more. It could be attractive or or something, but and it doesn't have to be a wall, but just maybe a few plantings or or something to kind of make a little more of a barrier there? We'll work closely with BART on that. They, they have similar concerns, and we'll, um, we'll make sure it's a safe uh, meets code and it is safe. Okay, thank you. Um, the UD-11. Um, oh, this is all the art. Um, Oh, actually, I can skip this one. I'm sorry. This one's fine. Um, but, oh, no, staying here. Um, two, so the surface decorative manhole. So this is a big manhole. It, it looks like on the drawings where the placement is that it's, can you just go over that and describe it? It's you do number two. Yeah. Right. It's not just a regular size manhole, right? It's a big, is it? No, these would be regular um, oh, they are. manholes. The idea is that instead of just having your standard, typical manhole, say, in our nice plaza that we're trying to make decorative, we would actually be able to design a special manhole that maybe features um, the project identity or something special to the city or maybe the transportation theme. Okay. So basically, it's a manhole, but it just is more decorative. Okay, I got a little confused because on the previous one where it shows the locations, um, it says two, and then there's a big circle, so UD10. And so I was like, I just wanted to confirm that that is, going, that is not this huge, big circle that we're talking about, but it's just, there's paving. So if you can go to UD10 right before. And then where two is right in the middle above 5B. And there's a circle there, and then there's a two. And so I was like, I, I just wanted to confirm. So you're going to put a mat. So there's that round circle you see is paving, special so paving, and then there's a manhole? Yeah, and I don't think maybe we have all of the manhole locations finalized within the Paseo. The idea is that anywhere that you do find a, a manhole in these kind of areas, like I said, that we want to make extra decorative, you would find this enhanced manhole. So. It could be technically anywhere within that Paseo. I don't know if that's the exact location, but the number two is just a general location, not the specific size. 
Okay. So that then that too that area there is that paving decoration or what what is that where that two was? So the two is just meant to highlight. I know. I mean, where the two is located, there's a big circle there. Oh. So can you just describe that? Sure. So that's just kind of a decorative area. It's meant to be kind of a turnaround. So okay. if someone drives down Garden Lane and maybe they didn't intend to actually pull into the parking structure, the residential garage, they could kind of just turn around and exit. Okay, I see. And so it's just, like I said, it's decorative decorative paving to kind of highlight the turnaround. Okay, thank you. Um, and then back to UD11. So the median barrier fence, what color is that gonna be? Just. I guess it's just a steel. Yeah, it's, like a it's just steel. Steel, so yeah, like I said, at the yeah, city's, okay. um, suggestion we did decide we would add some landscaping to kind of decorate it and add some nice greenery okay yeah I it's think only like i think a three, three feet foot wide median so there's not a lot of room to do stuff um but we can accommodate some landscaping okay thank you um and then five. Oh, and then five with the sculptural gateway art you're on the same page um and again the locations that you had in the in the um, in the site plan or in the previous plan, um, you just have them in a couple locations. So is that that's not set? Then I'm assuming so you're going to have them scattered throughout, or so so kind of bouncing back and forth between ten and eleven. So if you go to the the previous, so in our current proposal, these um, cool transportations circular spheres um, are proposed between the affordable building and the hotel. So they have kind of a nice little paseo between them that um, people that park in that large surface lot can walk through and there'll be just some decorative art elements there as well. We didn't want to, you know, not use art in all areas of the site. So that's kind of where you can find art in that area. Okay, and how, um, so it's going to be, these are just representative, so it can be, it's not just in the spots where you mentioned, but it could be kind of scattered throughout the parking lot and the walkways and. Yes, yeah, so it looks okay. like we also have some proposed at, um, close to Aviador as well, kind of at that entry walkway area. Okay, I, I just thought it would be nice to be able to have more, uh, I mean, oh. kind of to co make it more cohesive with other areas, um, that it might be nice to have a little bit more than that, but just So we my do thought. have those, that same material proposed at that, um, the art screen, which is um, number six in the plans. Mm -hmm. um, so right behind the Bart Plaza. So. Our idea was to, yeah, incorporate that same kind of transportation material theme throughout the project. Okay. So that we did have that at the median barrier, but like I said, the comment was that it was kind of too distracting. Right. I, I, which I agree <laughs> with, but um, yeah. So again, I just, because I saw them only in a couple locations and I thought it might be a nice thing to just tie the whole project together. And since you have the vertical art screen as well, it just, just a comment on mine. Um, and then the vertical art screen is going to be, um, it looks like it's like hidden away. What, I'm, um, if you go to UD10, so it's on the side of the BART Plaza. <coughs> kind of tucked away. It, I don't, it looks like it's just kind of hidden away there. No, it, can you see? Okay. Purposes for that. One is, um, as you're walking down Garden Lane, you'll see it. As you're walking to the BART station, you'll see it, and it will kind of hide a little traffic too behind okay. it. So that's the that's the reason for main the thing for that. Okay. And how tall? How tall and wide was that? Do you have how tall and wide? What is that going to be? Dimensions right there, right? Is that it? Not of the oh. screen. I'll, I I don't have the exact dimensions. I believe it's about, gosh, six, six. to eight feet tall, I believe. And so about eight feet tall and eight. maybe like 20 feet wide. Oh, okay. okay. And the idea is 
there'll be some panels that are open so that you can see through it. It doesn't just create like a wall that you can't see through and hide behind. Um, Okay, and actually I like it like that better where it looks like I, the BART train, kind of a BART train pattern, is was that intentional? The front of a BART train, the open space. I don't know, that's just, me. <laughs> that's just my, I thought that was intentional to kind of look like the top of the BART train, the front. Oh, I get what you, you get. Yeah, yeah. It does, that's Actually, what I thought it was, like it. yeah. So I thought I really that's like kind that. of interesting that you have BART going into Millbrae and kind of tying in all the customs and stuff. So I, I don't, personally, I like that. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna, and then to UD12. Um, I, I did see the city council meeting and I know that they wanted this to be simpler as a dog park. I, I kind of, am sad because I like the idea of an art walk. I like, I, I feel like if we can add back in some more of that art back in, like the interactive wall, that was really um, a fun feature. But that's just a comment that I will, I will make. Um, is there going to be any lighting in this area? Yes, so we are designing a extensive photometric plan that will ensure that the lighting levels are appropriate in that area. Um, so yes. That will all, um, I think there is a photometric plan and some lighting um, designs in this plan set, but yes, the city will review that and will need to conform to whatever city standards are appropriate for that area. Okay, could I, um, I think I looked at the lighting plan and I didn't see lighting there, and I know that this area is gonna be closed off at night, but at the same time, I don't think we want it to be dark, mm -hmm. um, just because the fence that's going in there is eight feet tall. And I think it would, I, do you have the lighting? Um, anyway, if, if you, I'll just make a note of that, that that's something that I would want to make sure is there. I didn't It'll see It'll be either. lit uh, in a safe manner, and one of the conditions is we have to meet a SEPTED standard, which is to create a safe space everywhere in the project, and we've So regardless that. if it's closed we've off? We've gotten a letter, right? yes. Okay, yes. great, so I just wanted to confirm that. Um, UD 13. Can you just remind me in, oh, never mind. I, I got that. I figured this one out already, so sorry. Um, so I'll go to A304. So now we're moving to architecture. Yes. Can you remind me what's building that's for? Oh, it's just the main, um, oh, it's the 5B? 5B, okay, thank you. The Millbury Avenue perspective. Is that the, I'm sorry, yes, what that's, that's, that's fine. Okay. Um, thank you. So, I think that's right. Yes. Um, just a comment that um, in, in terms of, uh, I, I do like better that it has more character to it, because I think I was one that didn't like the white, you know, at the beginning um, in the front, um, on the end building. Um, I'd be kind of curious just to know what other commissioners' <laughs> thoughts are in terms of the colors and everything. I'm I'm not a I'm still not a great fan of the the stripy panels, um, and it it feels like it is different, but it feels a little disjointed to me in terms of maybe it's the rendering, maybe it's because I'm not getting a good feel for it. But this is a little bigger of a, of a kind of a question, and then related to landscaping, on the rendering here, you can see from Millbury Avenue perspective, there are trees there, and I don't see anything on the landscape plan that it's related to that, so I guess two questions kind of rolled in to one. I think there's a request if you can make it larger, the um, zoom in. 
If I, while we're waiting, if I may clarify, when you say the kind of the more stripy material, is that the the brown area here? The second building. Oh, this one right here. Yeah, no. Um, so the, start from the end with the brown, the the cap, and then move one just right there. Right here. Yeah, the the vertical stripes. Yeah, I. Um, at least I give you a rationale why we kind of did that is because it, it uh, Millbrae's. Uh, is almost like a highway, so it's very high speed. And so instead of just having these kind of block of solid color, one of the things that we want to do is make it a little bit more animated because it's a pretty big, you know, fairly large building. So we want to break up the color um, uh, and also kind of the patterns a little differently so that these larger blocks doesn't get so monotonous. So that was the rationale for it, so. Okay, and the trees are are, where are they coming from? So, so when we added the dog run in there, um, the, the tree concept kind of got abandoned. We do have some trees in that area, but not quite the scheme that's being represented here. Okay, so, thank you. Uh, yeah. So, okay, so that rendering in, hmm. The landscape plan that you have is what we intend to uh, build there. I mean, if you leave the building perspective, what's on the landscape plans is what we're what we intend. Right. So then that perspective is the same, except there are no trees right in the front of it. Right. So if somebody's driving by, they're just going to see building a batch of buildings. Well, when they when they drive by, they're probably not going to see much of anything in there because you're at a, you're on the bridge, so it's all high. Somebody'd have to. Right. Like people are going to really see anything as if they're a pedestrian and they're looking over the top. I mean, you're going to see those buildings that are over the side. So I'm just saying, it looks. I'm just saying that the renderings look nicer because you have the buildings, but then you have kind of tree like green interspersed in there when you're just passing by and you have maybe five levels of building, you'll just see the building, so. Um, okay. Cool. Oh, I, okay, so I'll just put that comment out there that it's still kind of a, um, the colors there's, and stuff. Uh, the um, short answer is there's, there's few or no trees in there now. Right, so. okay, I mean, that's fine, but um, in terms of my comment about the colors and, and everything, it, um, personally, to me, it feels a little bit disjointed, but um, okay, and then I'll just go to the, I'm just running through questions. So um, A4, the 6A, the affordable housing. 6A, um, A4.0. I'm sorry, A3.07. A3 sorry, going back, yeah, 3.07, so go back to 5B, sorry. So, okay, so um, on the top top one, the South Station Road elevation, um, what is the difference? It looks like you have the roof being sloping upward there. So can you, um, what is the difference in that scale um, of the slope? Jack, I'll answer that for you. Okay, thank you. I'm not quite catching the question. It looks like going from left to right, Yes. it's... It's narrower and it's yes. getting wider. So I just wanted to know what is that difference? What is a differential slope that the, the is differential there? is about five feet in terms of from the low point to the high point. Uh, the, the reason why we did that is we wanted to emphasize kind of the kind of anchor corner um, right off of the um, El Camino Real, or at least you're coming through the El Camino Real corner. So, okay. and also we have a height limit. That's why we kind of. 
um, because of the FAA. So it kind of creates that's that's a, as far as far as we can go. So okay. Um, so what's the difference when you go then to the affordable building? Um, I don't want to keep calling it affordable building, but um, I guess that's what we call it. Um, anyway, the 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 veterans housing, residents preferred housing. There's also a slope. There's that one is a curved slope. What's the difference in the um, height? It's, it's probably about the same, but the veterans building is actually sh uh, shorter. So we're not under the same kind of uh, limitations on the height limit for the FAA. So. Okay. Uh, and also, by the way, the, the, why we went to a shallower slope is also, I think, is more respectful of the office building next door, and, and very subtle kind of change instead of very, you know, the, the, the office building is extremely sophisticated, and simple, and clean line. Mm -hmm. So we want to create some emphasis without having it to be too overt, you know. So and let the canopy of the BART station be the the real icon. So okay. So but the difference, I'm sorry. I just wanted to, you were making a great point. I just wanted to indicate that what might be helpful for a future plan. So on just front A307, where you're showing the height of the building to 80, 80 feet, seven inches on the um, south side, maybe on the garden elevation side, we could have that scaled out as well. Yeah, I think we, we can put uh, dimensions there just to see the differential, Un understood. So the height difference is about the same be between the two buildings? I mean, um, so the height difference for the uh, veterans building, affordable building, is about five feet as well, the differential, you or less? The, the swoop. The swoop. The mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would say that's about the, 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 relatively speaking, that's about the dimensions, yeah. OK. Um, and this is just a, a personal, I, I kind of, my thought is that it would actually be nice if the residential, the market rate residential building swooped in the same way, it just because it'll kind of be more similar to the BART station and kind of cohesive with the other building, kind of tying that, in, you know, having a, a theme rather than having just one straight going up and then having one going a, a gentle, a swooping up, so. I, I would agree with you if there was actually a form, if there's a massing behind it, but that's actually a parapet wall so if we swoop a parapet wall, it looks like a really cheap retail building that you see once in a while when you pass by. The, the retail, those, those swoop walls, when it's not becoming a form, it actually becomes, I, I think, cheap looking, to be honest. So I, that's kind of, at least that's, you know, kind of our approach to it. Um, you know, where if, if there, there was actually a, a, a massing, a, a entire part of the building that comes up with that form, I definitely agree with you. But I think in this case, it's really just a parapet condition. So we, we, that's kind of our subjective decision that we made. Okay. We, we'd rather have the form, the canopy of the BART station, the real tensile structure is very strong form that gives forms to the curve. To me, those are the better, from, from a professional point of view, that's a better use of a curve form, not in a linear fashion like we have. So. Okay, all right, thank you. Um. And Sorry. Um, going to the landscaping, I'll, I'll just jump to the landscaping one now to one, if I may. So, oh, I, I'm sorry, L three. So if you can, L3, if you can go to L L3.0. And can you just describe, because um, it's hard to get that perspective of again. So these residential courtyards, it's kind of, you have the buildings that are bumping in, right? But these res residential courtyards, they're not on the ground floor, right? No, they're actually they're on the elevated on the, essentially the third floor. So it's almost at level with Millbrae uh, Avenue. And that's why it's kind of a cool thing is that, you know, at the ground level, you have the garage, you know, plinth that push it up. But then the residents are now living off of those courtyards, are actually viewing the, the hills beyond. And, and uh, you know, just so that 
it inter 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 interact with uh, the uh, streets. Okay, so that was going to be my question: is where, how does that relate to Millbrae Avenue? So it's actually the same, almost the same of elevation, or it's well, higher or depends, lower? Or? Because Millbrae Avenue is kind of sloping up, so right. uh, the ones that's further to the east is above Millbrae Avenue. Okay. The ones further west is probably I, I don't know what the exact elevation is about at the elevation of Millbrae Avenue, but they're separated by the by the quote unquote art walk, so. There's no connection to the, to the street. Right, I know there's no connection to the street. I'm just thinking, again, as you're driving by or as there, the residents are there, what are we, what are we each mutually seeing? So, so you it, could see into the courtyard, but what, one thing that you do see is that we actually have landscaping trees and kind of a, 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 kind of a railing conditions up along there, so there will be some privacy. You know, so that the headlights and whatnot doesn't shine directly into the courtyard. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'm I'm going to stop for now. I have signed stuff, but I'll wait. So. Okay. Kathy, anything right now? No. Uh, I had noticed some of the same items, but no sense. Everybody talking about the same thing more than once. Sure. Um, I think the changes you made are fantastic. You did a great job of responding to a whole bunch of comments. Um, hmm? The um, what, we, what we just heard, I, I think all the buildings do relate to each other. They're all they're in a family together, but I like that they're all special. I actually like that the afford, I love the affordable building now. I think it looks more elegant. It's a much more respectful place for that purpose. I, I love it. Um, what else? I love that there's a dog park. I know it's a more simple use, but um, our, I'm not even a dog person. I have cats, but uh, I know that people need, need dog parks. They need a place to take their dogs, and your residents are, it sounds like they will have dogs, and it's, that's a fabulous use of that space. I mean, that was, that was a good idea. Um, what else? I like the multicolored on the um, residential, the different color blocks. Those don't bother me. They don't. No, when, especially this one, this elevation here on A304, because it, you get, it just looks a little more subtle when it's all back. You, you can see how, like the two ends look a little bit more special. I love the new west-facing side. Um, it does have more dimension now, which is nice. Um, I don't, I don't have much else. You want me to? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I tend to agree uh, that the signage has bothered me with the signage where you have to go like that. So I'm glad. I don't know how anybody else feels, but I prefer it down. And there was one other thing that I just happened to think about. I'm okay with the design and the the way it is, and there was one other thing, and now I can't think of what it is. Ooh, it's kind of like the signage I remembered as soon as I finished talking. So um, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I may think of something else. Great, thank you. We, you know, we've, uh, as you know, oh, I do have something. We have a great group of professionals that have worked closely and responded to all comments we reasonably could and uh, conformed all the ordinances, and appreciate your comments. Okay. See, I knew I would remember. Um, the signage, um, you know, the large signage, um, yes. that it looks like you're going to put one on, have you decided to put one on the, um, on, on Millbury Avenue, on the dividing part there? We have two options for you if you'd like to see them. I mean, yeah. we're happy with either one. Okay, so I... I wanted to ask you um, on the two um, tall signages um, yeah let's go to that page because I did have a preference on those um, okay, so here they are those are the two variations 
Yeah. You see the two locations also, or just the variations? Um, the two variations and the location. To me, the one, um, see, I knew. Um, I prefer the one on the left, and it looks like the bottom has the city seal on it. Is yes. that correct? It has room uh, for several seals if you want. Yeah. And I prefer Milbray. Am I going down? Um, I, I like it a lot better than the traditional Milbray signage that was recently approved. Um, it was not my preference, but I'm just giving you my thoughts here. Um, there was one place of it um, at building number one. Please help me find it. Um, on the corner where you had the tall signage there. Um, Page, page nine on the sign plans. Hmm? Page nine on the sign plans, I think, is what you're looking for. This one. On these or on this no, one? that one. Is that it? Yes. Yes. Um, I felt that was pretty busy. Um, and I didn't know if I was the only one that felt that way. Um, page nine. Uh, yeah. I... I I didn't think we needed the tall sign there. Um, I preferred Gateway at Melbray Station and then the signage down here. The one where it has option A, it seems like the sign there was cluttering up the corner. Okay. I mean. We, the, the second option you see up here, which is on the median on Melbray Avenue, and that would clear the corner out and make room for the marquee sign on the building if you want that. Those were the two options that staff liked. Yeah. And, and we got a ton of feedback on signage, and this is a culmination of that feedback. Yeah, because to me, the stand-up sign on the street corner is cluttering up with the Gateway Millbrae Station with all the other little things, and I, I personally prefer the Gateway Millbrae Station coming down. Our project architect checks Tang strongly agrees with you on that <laughs> point too. But uh, again, we've got two options. I, I mean, I did see the two options, and um, in fact, the red one that's there. What what was underneath those four? Were they just four dots or? Um, those are placeholders for city symbols or clubs, Aquinas yeah. Club, uh, well, we veteran associations. The whatever. unfortunate thing is we would need a lot more than four, so I think if they weren't there, it might be easier. <laughs> and then, if anything, it, it would seem like it would be better on Millbrae Avenue than inside your project. Okay. I mean, the two things. We agree. But I, I, I did like the tall sign on, on the medium strip um, there um, because we are removing the existing corners. That's what you purchased? Correct. Uh, only on one side, on your side? Correct. Okay, so of staff, staff, the other side is staying the way it is? Uh that's the way it is now. Now, I don't know what we'll look at in the future. Maybe we look at some additional streetscape improvements along Millbrae, but for now, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. So I think a, a nice sign in the center would unify both sides. I agree. My comments. Since we're talking about that, I want, would like to see the Gateway Station big, tall marquee sign come back. Um, this is, it, it is, it, its project needs an identity. This isn't Millbrae, it's your project, and it's a place. And you've got a giant sign on the other end, there should be a giant sign at this end as well to introduce it. Um, I don't, like Kathy, I don't like having the Millbrae welcome sign on your property. It's much better in the median. I do prefer the red sign, but I'm, I'm not going to cry if it goes the other way. But Millbury did a lot of work to come up with a fresh, modern way to brand ourselves. And that fits that scheme. And so I hate to just throw it away because we've done so much work on it. But like I say, that's not a deal breaker. But back to the median. But our median needs some work, too. 
<laughs> no, it's not the world's biggest median. We have to have a whole lot of traffic lanes there, but it needs a little help to go with a nice, beautiful sign. Go ahead. Thank you. I might think of something else. Can I just make a comment on the sign? Sure. Sorry. Since we're on it, and then, um, so I'll just put it, yeah, I'll just throw my two cents in. I, I agree as well. I think it, I mean, it, it feels really busy on that corner, and I do agree with Commissioner um, Davis as well about the marquee on that, and the, on that corner. I, I really like that, having that there. That does have the lettering going sideways, too, so just to make a note. The marquee, the uh, page nine, Correct. it's going sideways as well, no. so <laughs> just a note. Um, I would, I would probably um, prefer also the red sign. It wasn't my first choice when we, when it went through us, but it's, it's there uh, in the other parts of the city, and I think, you know, to keep that, you know, cohesion. And also, um, if you have a sign that's that's see-through, like that one, then when they're coming out of Millbrae, it's backwards, right? Um, it's backwards when they're coming toward the freeway. It is. It won't be because it's... It, Sideways. But if, you, if they make it straight, it'll... Then it'll be backwards for sure. <laughs> how? It'll be backwards however you... If you look at it from the other side, go to the other side, it'll be... It'll be like looking in a mirror. It'll be, yeah, it'll be backwards. So I, I, so I think that's kind of, that'll be distracting. So... Um, I, the solid sign will remedy that. The, uh, yeah, so the solid sign, then you could put Millbury on both sides. Well, I guess you don't need it when you're exiting, but in any case, it's, yeah, you can have it on both sides, but you'll have the M, which will be the same either way, and um, like I said, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of these signs, but <laughs> thought, it, thought it looks like a cat, but... Um, but it's there, and it actually turned out okay. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I, I was like, that looks like a cat. But, um, <laughs> and since she made that comment a, at yeah. one of the planning <laughs> meetings <laughs> way long M. back, it's, every I, time I see the sign. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Add some levity to the conversation. Um, but it's there. It's part of our, you know, the city and what we have, and I think that kind of cohesion, especially if it's going to be in the median, makes more sense to me. So I, I, I'll leave that. Ready? Yeah. Um, as soon as she said it, I see it every time. <laughs> but I think um, my comments are relatively concise and it's in a typed up format. But as far as the project as a whole, I think it'll go a long way if we can allocate some of those commercials and retail space in more strategic locations. I think meeting the minimum retail and commercial space requirement is exactly just that, just meeting the minimum. Um, it could be more and it could be better, and if you do, it'll benefit memory a lot more. So I would highly encourage that. I believe the northwest corner and along the garden lane, you know, within the 5B building, um, it, it's a premium space for commercial and retail activities. And I think those high traffic areas should be more activated um, and then can be prioritized for, for retail over bike storages. A pet cam, maintenance space, and leasing office and fitness centers, which is what you currently propose them to be. Um, facilities such as bike storage as well as maintenance space, um, they could be relocated to Front South Station Road instead and still be relatively convenient and still be relatively appropriate uh, for the tenants and your maintenance staff, I'm sure. Um, on to the second comment, the hotel component of this development is a highly visible part of this project. Um, and it's important that this hotel looks good and it projects the proper image of Millbrae. I think, you know, eventually, no matter what you, however you look at it, every pedestrian and travelers that get off the BART stations and train stations, this is the first thing they see as far as Millbrae goes. So the image that this hotel projects, it will, be, it will, it will reflect upon the people who, who walks into our town as a, as a, a first impression. So it's an image that it looks good. It's important that this image looks good. Um, hotel tax is a key component to the economic benefit that this project will bring to Millbrae. I think the current hotel doesn't have any meeting rooms or banquet rooms and available for events. Um, so I think if there's anything we can do to make this project more successful, uh, it would make sense for us to have a hotel of higher level of amenities. The TOT revenues in this project would 
directly benefit Melbourne, and it will help us maintain our city and revamp our aging infrastructure and keep our city revenue streams more stable. So in essence, I think this project is already approved as it currently stands, and the DA is already signed. So you know, it will need to move forward as quickly as possible for the sake of Millbrae, I think. So I think all Millbrae residents wants to see this project done and be a successful project, not only for the applicant, but as well as for Millbrae as a whole. So I think I'm really hoping that to look forward to seeing more cooperations you know, from the applicant and instead of saying, this is what we have today, you know, we like to approve it as it is, um, maybe actually work towards some of the spirits of these requests and modify the project in a way that will benefit Millbrae a little more. Thank you, Mr. Fung, for your comments. I guess my quick response is we feel we've been very cooperative, worked very collaboratively with your staff, uh, the study sessions, the council, and the planning commission. Uh, we've given you the reasons why we've laid the building out the way we have. It's uh, structurally we're already down the road on it, and we believe the way it's laid out will uh, will give it our best chance of success. We have a all our experts here who helped us do this, uh, again, our experience in the business indicates this is the way we should do it. We conform, as you've mentioned, we conform to the specific plan and all the elements of it. And I, I appreciate your comments, but again, I would respectfully request that we, you uh, approve what's before you this evening and staff's recommendation. Thank you. I did have one. Um, I was looking at the floor plans and the size of the apartments are very generous. Thank you. Um, I have a couple very comments. Very livable. Oh. Um, if I can go back to signs a little bit more. So the 6A affordable housing sign, page 33. In which? Um, in the signage, signs. So page 33 in the sign program. Oh, that's like apartments? So I do like overall all, all the project signs. I think the signage, the freestanding signs, the wayfinding, I, I really like the whole texture of it and feel of it. Um, I just had a question um, which I had asked previously. Right now it just says apartments. It's not going to just say apartments, right? So what is the... Uh, what is the wording? Yes. It will not say apartments. We do not have an official project name yet, but I okay. guarantee you it'll be a lot better than apartments. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I, condo. <laughs> I, I mean, if it's going to be veterans prefer, I mean, not that it should be strictly like a, a veteran based or military based necessarily, but I feel like to, I feel like this is one of the projects that we should really be proud of and um, make a big deal about. And so it's really, uh, that's why I bring it up. I, I'd really like to be able to see a, a great name. I don't know if you can reach out to veterans groups or mark, you know, marketing specialists or, or whatnot, but to really get a good name in there. And then that back elevation that faces Highway 101, right now there's no, um, there's no signage that is, I mean, there's a signage kind of low down if you look at the back elevation. So exactly what you're talking about. So even having some really, you know, nice, beautiful signage kind of higher up adjacent to where you're going to have the hotel signage, you know, I mean, not adjacent to, but kind of around the same level or something where, you know, we make it a big deal. I, I, I don't know. Personally, I, I think that would be, you know, a great thing to have. To Understood. And we can do that. And that's just my speaking, but I'm just thinking, yeah, that back elevation, it just looks really empty, and so maybe something like that. And then the hotel building signage, page 36, um, right now it just says residence in, but on your other rendering, you have it as uh, Mil at Millbrae Station. There's some note to Millbrae on page 36. That's somewhat dictated by the franchisor in, in this case, okay. so we're showing what we know can be delivered and okay so there is i mean so i i'm not talking about the the actual hotel itself i'm talking about any reference to millbrae and if we can't do it there then maybe all the more it'd be great to have something on the um the 6b building or 6a building it's great you got them we have the marquee signed back now as yeah. you're looking to move forward with and that's uh, that's a major identity of the project and millbrae but the marquee sign would be off of Millbury Avenue? 
Correct. So, um, and I'm, I'm just saying something where if somebody's driving, not that people are going to stare to the side, hopefully, while they're driving on the freeway, but, you know, some kind of identity, even if you're looking from afar as you're going, s some kind of a signage back there. Good point. There, there, the sign package has opportunities for signage on the, on the top floors of the buildings. Okay. So on the east side, we could have signage that identifies the project also that you could see from the freeway. Something to consider. So are we, do we consider signage as part of the, the signage program? Is that part of the whole idea? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, regarding the signage, um, on some of the buildings, uh, the office buildings, I'm sure that it is correct, but I, I saw a lot of pink spots, and I think that's where the signage is going to be, and it seemed like a lot to me, so I'm hoping that there's not a lot of signs on the office building those are potential locations and, I know uh, and I saw that and I was hoping that uh, it wasn't going to be all kinds of signs there they just um, what, what I can say is we'll, we'll conform to, what we've submitted to you conforms to your signing yeah. ordinance in the city uh, typically uh, on a building like that usually the major tenants will get a sign. You know, if Google goes there or we're lucky enough to have something like that, there'll be a sign there. There could be a couple signs there and maybe three. Yeah, but I, I see it on the signage up in uh, South San Francisco, and some of them are getting pretty cluttered. But um, I'm sure it's what's allowed. Um, if you can keep that to the minimum, uh, it seems like a lot of that signage makes the buildings look cluttery and not quite as attractive. It takes away from the design of the building. And the buildings are very nice. Except those are going to be major tenants and they're going to be providing fabulous jobs to Millbrae and some of them, a handful of them, are going to be deserving of a sign. And depending upon the companies, could bring lots of prestige to Millbrae. Yes. We would welcome those signs to be on the building. Absolutely. But since we're talking about those signs, it looks like there's opportunities for the retail tenants, either down below or the commercial tenants, to put signs on the residential building. Is that, did I read that right? There's uh, opportunity on the corner that, uh, to put a sign up there. Yeah, I don't like that. On the, on the residential, it just it feels weird. I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning like Pete's Coffee on the top of the building. No, it's kind of bugging me. What you're going to put. Uh, that certainly is not the intent. Okay, so maybe I, I just need to see a better example. But it was like, oh, on the residential, I don't know if I want to see big signs on the residential. More like Google. <laughs> <laughs> on the. But Google's not living in that building. Google lives behind, so I'm I'm not sure that it needs to be on the residential. I don't know if, else if you would you have to come before planning or something like that to put some of that signage up or is that going to be a staff decision right so <clears throat> this package represents their master sign program so it's really um, compliant with the city sign code and then with the they are you know pr proposing the actual locations here yeah I kind of saw them yeah I did notice that They're opportunities, right? They may not all be taken. And thank you for saying the shops with no extra P or E. I appreciate that. <laughs> Shop with no extra. So superfluous P's and E's. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Is that all for me? I th anybody got anything else? Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, right, I have one more, but I can't. I can't find it. So I was hoping somebody else would stall. Mm. Yeah, about the gantry sign, I just wanted to know um, that height. I think there was a question that came up about the height at the city council meeting. So I just wanted to confirm. 
um, the height that it's the clearance is it's the clearance at least a minimum of a freeway clearance I think that is 17 feet or something like that so okay so I just wanted to confirm that um, Nope, I'm good. I'm, I, li I like the um, changeable banners along the walkway. I, I really like that aspect of it and hope that we'll... It's not, ele it's not electronic, is it? It's the changeable banners, page 19, along the walkway. I don't think they're electronic. No, no, they're not. They're just banners. Fabric material. Page 19. I'm sorry, the kitty cat. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, but I like that Millbury Farmer's Market banner there. I like that idea, too. So, mm -hmm. so just that comment. Okay. Maybe. We have a motion. And just, just to clarify, you have a resolution, so you're voting okay. on the resolution that's in your package. All right. Okay. Um, I make a motion that we approve. Um, you want me to read the resolution? You just give the number. Uh, resolution um, number 19-03. Is that all I need to? This? It's in the packet. So. Yeah, I make a motion that we approve resolution number 1903. Okay, I'll second. Oh. oh. Can you clear the board real quick? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, now go, Kathy. There you go. Your votes? Oh, go ahead. Done? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Passes yes. three to one with Commissioner Fung saying no, and there's a 10 day right of appeal. Thank you all very much for your time and consideration. We look forward to moving to the next step. Thank you. <laughs> you want a break? You want after break or anything? Okay. If we could, uh, hello. If we could leave pretty quietly and quickly, we have a little bit more business to conduct. Oh, gavel, gavel, gavel. Oh. Here we go. Got to use it. Use her. There it is. If you could exit, if you could exit, please. Through the chip. We want to go home. Yeah, you can have your ball. <laughs> you. we, st we still have hearing. We still have some hearing left. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can we clear the room so we can continue the meeting? And that way everybody she gets to still go. It's going to take two minutes. You just got to let them know. Okay. Someone wants to write a check and waste their money making a decision. It's already going to be Okay. All these little intricacies. We still have two more on the agenda. Don't make me get it out. Give it away. Okay. Excuse me. Can we? We need to carry on. Can we? Exit, please. <laughs> oh, she's, look at that cute thing right there. That's going to live in the dog park. <laughs> it's it. The cats are hiding in it. They're going to take over. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All right, thank you. All right, new business. We don't have any. <laughs> Staff updates. 
Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, so uh, the one update I did want to make everybody aware of is that, you know, we are scheduled again next Monday on the 18th. And that is for, um, yeah. that is for the continuation of the the TOD one design review, as well as consideration of the amendment to the specific plan to deal with the 45 degree setback issue. Oops, Mike. sorry, Mike, for you. Mike, Mike. I have it on. Oh, you still can't hear me though. All right. So the the hearing on Monday is a con is the is a continuation of the public hearing on the design review for TOD one, the Sarah Station project. Uh, in addition. Uh, the commission will be asked for its recommendation with regard to an amendment to the specific plan to address the issue of the 45 degree setback requirement uh, adjacent to the Hemlock Avenue neighborhood. Yes, that's correct. And also we do have an, a few other items on the agenda that evening. So uh, I apologize for that, but we, we have to keep, keep moving along. So um, you will be getting your packet Is there tomorrow any sense of timing i mean i if these are like house remodels or whatever those residents can you tell them to come don't come at seven can you give them any guidance at all so we, they don't have to sit here forever yeah we certainly can do that yes we'll reach out and make sure that they are aware or at least yes. tell them to bring snacks or something yeah. okay yeah. okay that and three yes we can do it <laughs> wow three? no so two <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Meisner, is it two residential projects plus TOD-1? Three. There are three residential projects plus TOD-1. Yeah, we'll get as far as we can, and if, if we need to move them along, then we'll, we, we can do that, but we have to keep well, I mean, moving. You know, we got to, like you said, it's, if we can get those people going, then we should hear their projects. Is there any way that... Microphone, Kathy. TOD one um, tonight. We've been here tonight. two and a half hours, and since we're doing two things, it is a continuation. Yeah. So we, we, do we did have a, a session. discussion last week. Right. So I don't. You know, people are free to come and speak again. Maybe they don't need to if they've already expressed themselves. We could maybe make that suggestion if we're. Yeah, but tonight, without a lot of speakers, even it took two and a half hours. Right. But right. what he's saying is, we did some of our discussion last week with Sarah, so we we got a little head start on that one. So mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and then uh, with the uh, cases, uh, I can double check just to see if there's any case that's not extremely pressing but as a, as it stands now we do have the three cases and um, you know I didn't really want to think we've tapped into our special meetings enough this this month <laughs> and again I, I do want to say thank you again so um, you probably could have taken one of those tonight <laughs> yeah well we are doing the best on agenda management we, yeah. we have quite a few projects in the pipeline and we'd like to, to get moving along thanks thank you any commission comments I'll start with thank you. This is massive. Um, all these special meetings means a lot of special work for you too, so thank you. Okay. Well, hopefully we get caught up. Exactly. Do we have any other big ones um, in the pipe? Getting close? We have a lot of there is certainly a lot of interest in Millbrae right now, and I can tell you that on a daily basis, we are getting a lot of phone calls from a lot of interested parties. So it's it's a very ex exciting time to be here. Great to hear. Good to know. It, it just a quick question, I'm, and I'm sorry, I probably dragged out the meeting longer. Um, are we? Can we get an update on not right now, but at some point at the cell site ordinance? Because I think that was supposed to have gone through attorney a couple weeks ago, um, and I I would totally like to ditto um, the thank you to all the staff and just all the meetings and and everything that you're going through. So, um, okay, that's it. He Are answered we, my email last night at ten o'clock. What a guy. Yeah, so. weekends, evenings. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Any announcements? 
at my shredding party on April 20th, e-waste recycling. Beautiful. You better get two trucks. I have, I always have two trucks. Oh. <laughs> yes, I always have two trucks. If you have a lot, come a little bit later in the, later like 11.30 and we'll, we'll be able to get you through faster. You don't shred on site, right? You we do shred on site. Yeah. yeah, I lose my voice because I'm yelling because um, I can't communicate besides yelling because we have two trucks that are going shredding like nonstop. So it's a fun time. I, I used to play music, but it doesn't do any good because you can't hear it. <laughs> and then we, it does, we do have e-waste recycling too. So that they just collect it and then take it away. So it's all free, but um, funds for Mills High School. So good. you're all welcome. Awesome. Well done. All right. We're adjourned. That's not so bad. This wasn't so bad. This wasn't so bad. <laughs> it was only 9.30. <laughs>